So the previous video kind of showed a rough overview slash introduction to the attachment components, but they didn't really explain why. It just kind of gave you an idea on, oh, a real quick, simple and dirty using it. So I'm going to give it a little bit more in depth and talk about kind of what actually happens behind the scenes to some extent in conjunction with all of these settings. And to do so, we're going to be working on getting out this AK a little bit. So here, what we're going to have is, as far as attachments go, we have a optic that it comes with as well as a rail adapter. So I really don't know why these are all static meshes. I quite frankly wish they weren't because that is just wasteful at this point. But what's going to end up happening is, in order to mount the optic, we need to attach a rail to the side here of the receiver, and then we can attach an optic to the rail. So that's what's going to be our kind of goal, as well as I want to step you through it along the way and explain kind of what's going on. So in our tutorial character, I swapped it back out, so we are now holding the AK like so. Still don't know why it does that little freak out if you aim like right as you hit play. But to begin, we want to open our tutorial AK blueprint here. And we want to, I'm going to go ahead and organize these. So the attachment's going to have an M4 folder. And the AK folder, like so. So first thing that we need to have is we need, stupid camera. We need to have the Picatinny mount or slash adapter, whatever you want to call it. That mounts to the side of the receiver here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add an attachment component. So we're going to name this SKG underscore attachment underscore, let's do rail mount. So configuring this, we have the attach to mesh name. So that is going to be when the attach to runs, it's going to tell it to attach basically to the firearm. So you can have as many components in here as you want that are derived from scene component but you can pick kind of individually which, I guess you say, which one you want to attach to. It's not necessarily specific to the firearm itself, but we're going to, in this case, use the skeletal mesh. Now we need the socket in which the attachment is going to attach to. So I'm going to call this one S underscore, let's do attach underscore pick rail mount. So we're going to copy that, and let's go ahead and just add it, just kind of get this stuff out of the way. Same stuff we did in the previous video. Uh, crap, what was it called? It's the AK rail adapter. So rail adapter. Gonna go ahead and rotate that 90 degrees up and go figure. Is this already lined up perfect? Yeah, it is. So I guess they set their stuff up with a origin point that is pretty much just right to the root. Which, no, yeah, that's fine. So I guess we're just going to leave it to the root. Otherwise you would be uh, adjusting it and positioning it, you know, where you want. So moving on from there, we have the component name. Now this is just used for pretty much any sort of customizer. So as you can see by the comment, user interface. So if you want to have kind of like I had the uh, provided example firearm customization just to kind of show you adjusting the components or the attachments that's what it uses here so just kind of you can list like hey this attachment point is called say I don't know rail attachments I'm just kind of spitballing a name there but it's an optional thing it's more so if you want to use it now moving on we have the auto set leader pose component now I need to add a comment for this but this is specific for skeletal meshes that would deform. So for example, a character. So let's say you had your character and you have a backpack and a plate carrier that you want to add as an attachment. Well, if you did not set the leader pose component, the attachment in the backpack as you leaned or as you looked up and down would not move with your character. They would stay in place and basically be floating. However, if this was enabled, they would then auto apply themselves using the leader pose component and it would be pretty much set up from there. Now, this is something, if you're not familiar with what I'm referring to, if you look into the leader pose component, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. So it's really quite simple. Next up is the random default attachment. Now this applies to the compatible attachment. So here we want to actually set one of these up. Now to do so is very easy. We're just going to go to attachments, attachments AK, and we're going to go to miscellaneous. 
data asset. And if you search for SKG, you'll see the PDA attachment compatibility. So we're going to call this one DA underscore AK side rail. We're going to make that the first compatibility attachments uh, section, so to speak. Let's open it on up. And you can see basically all it is is an array of attachments. Oops, nothing more. So we can go ahead and add an element. And here's where we would want to give the class for our side rail that we're going to make here shortly. So that's what it's going to be for. Now, if we enable random default attachment, what it's going to do is it'll pick a random attachment out of this array. So we can kind of pick and choose what what goes into it, what could possibly be there. And if you have multiple sections, that's why this is made in an array. So you can have uh, you know, several different ones. So for example, I have in the example in four, I have one for just normal optics and I have a data asset for 30 millimeter mounts because those are kind of you know separate from each other. But I want them both to be able to fit onto the top of the M4 picket or the uh, top of the upper receiver of the M4. So what I do is I add one for the optics, and then I have another one for the 30 millimeter mount. Although I have that labeled wrong, I can't remember exactly what I called it. Maybe it was just mount. Yeah, optic mounts. And that's what that would be used for. Then we have our default attachment. So that is which attachment is going to spawn here. Now, this can be anything. So if your compatibility or compatible attachments is empty, like so, then you can select any attachment and it'll just attach itself. Like that's it. However, if you do have compatible attachments set up like this, you can only set up an attachment that is inside, I thought I had that open, that is inside of this array. So that's what it kind of uses as a filtering point, so to speak. Going from there, we have whether or not we can modify what's inside of this attachment. So for example, let's say I had, let's pretend this is for an optic. So not the side mount, side rail, whatever you want to call it. If I wanted to swap optics and I had allow client side modification set to true, then that would allow the client to basically be the authority and say, hey, I'm changing the attachment here and to go ahead and allow it. So it basically makes its way to the server and all that. The server makes the changes as per the client request and that's all. This is false. The client cannot make the, uh, is not, it just won't even allow it. It'll reject it. And if someone tries to cheat in and they force call the RPC, which the client by default, the code will stop it. But let's say they make the call, the RPC call by default. So they somehow cheated. Maybe they got a, they called the function pointer for it and just passed everything through. The server's going to kick them out. So that's how it's set up by default. Like it's just going to reject their connection and yeet them. So we leave this to true by default. It just makes things a lot easier, especially during the testing phase and all that. And for some, it's going to be quite useful. So that's really all the options. It's quite simple. And when attachments or attachments components are constructed and they are of immediate use, they are registered automatically with the attachment manager. And then when attachments get added, changed, removed, etc., they also get updated in their own way to the attachment manager. So they kind of get uh, two sets, so to speak, get kept track of. So to be kind of continue on, we want to go ahead and make that blueprint. So we're going to do actor BP underscore tutorial, AK side mount. Open that up. We're going to add a skeletal mesh. And the reason I'm doing this instead of continuing with the M4 is because it is different. I forgot what it was called. Rail adapter. Yeah, that's it. So we have the rail adapter. Simple enough. We're going to go ahead and make that the compatible, or uh, one of the classes in the compatible thing. Side mount, not rail. So we're going to add that like so. Hit save, go to our tutorial AK, and make that a default part. So AK side mount. It's now a default part, so when we hit play, as you can see, we now have the mount right there attached to the side of the firearm. Now let's continue on and let's add a optic to this. So we're going to hit add, not skeletal, we're going to search for a attachment 
component like so. And this one's going to be the optic. So we can configure it kind of the same way before. So we have skeletal mesh. So the name of this mesh here. Then we have our attach to socket. I'm going to do S underscore attach underscore optic. Copy that. And add that as a socket and add the preview asset of what was it? Okay, I guess they labeled it a cog for, okay. So we're going to add that as the preview. And we need to rotate this by 90. And thanks to the origin points, it's kind of already pre-aligned, but we can still, if we want to, move it up and back. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave it as the default. And we now have our attachment. So back to the uh, mount here. We know we're good to go. Now the only thing we need to do is set up the compatible attachments and the default attachment as well. So I'm going to duplicate this, and this one's going to be AK. Uh, let's do side rail optics. And we're going to change this. Actually, we don't have it created yet, so that we're going to make that none. I'm going to close some of this stuff out. And we're going to create a new actor, not a folder. It's going to be BP underscore tutorial, AK side rail out. We're just going to call it the side mount optic. Getting a little inconsistent with the names. And again, it's going to be a skeletal mesh. They put it as ACOG. And we want this to be, or have the uh, procedural anim component like so. So label it skeletal mesh for the procedural mesh name. We have the socket S underscore aim. So let's go to our, uh, what do you want to call it here? Oh, it already has, which one is this for? Unless this gets carried over, I wonder, from the firearm, because it has the left hand IK as well. Okay, so we're going to make a new socket, and we're going to call it something different. Oops. So we're going to add socket, S underscore, aim, optic. So that's going to be the procedural anim socket name that we're going to use. And let's go ahead and get this roughly in position. To get it kind of centered. Uh, we're going to tweak this when we do the actual optic component as well. But the one thing we want to do is under aiming settings, we want to swap this out to use the X axis for the forward axis. So if you recall from a couple of videos ago, if you watched it, the, the firearm for the AK is X forward. So in our procedure anim, we set the forward axis to be X. So as you can kind of see here, this one's forward facing on the X, and that's just simply Y. So we now have our, basically our optics set up. We have a position, so we can close that. We just need to set the compatible attachment, which is going to be our AK side mount optic. And then on our rail, here we need to set the compatible attachments to be that AK optic, and then our AK side mount optic as the default part. So now when I hit play, you can see we now have, camera's too fast, we now have a optic right there. So let's go to aim, and you can see we have the exact same problem that we had when we aimed with the firearm initially. So we just need to rotate the socket around to kind of find where we need it. So we know that the roll is incorrect, so we're going to rotate that up by 90. So now it should be vertical, like so. And now we need to rotate to the right by 90. We now aim with our optic. Now we don't have any reticle or anything like that yet. That'll come in probably the next video so I can kind of keep these together in length. But that's pretty much the way the attachment system works. So you're not limited to firearms. This is used for really kind of anything. You basically just kind of, I guess, do whatever you want with it. Like it's not dependent on anything. It doesn't have any sort of specific use case. It's just a generic attachment system that can be used for 
you know, static skeletal meshes that deform, all that kind of stuff. So that's really the gist of the uh, setting up that attachment. And the next one, I do want to take this farther. I got to figure out how this was unwrapped and if it was actually unwrapped, you know, not badly <laughs> to where this glass will either replace or be in place of the reticle or if it will just, I might, I don't know if there's a circle, like a, I don't know, I might have to make like a little mesh or something to go inside of it and that might be a quick fix. I just got to look at the actual optic and see because I haven't looked at it to see what all it would actually entail or if it's set up to be, you know, used in this manner. But anyways, that'll be that on the next video. So I will see you then.